Are you sensitive to energy? Want to explore the world beyond the five senses? Looking for a new career as an alternative health care practitioner? Then the Institute of Applied Energetics, Medical Intuition, and Energy Medicine Training Programs may be right for you. Our comprehensive curriculum provides students with a deep understanding of how to detect, evaluate, and transform the subtle body, as well as techniques for correcting energetic imbalances that may underscore a person's ability to experience radiant health. So if you are sensitive to energy, contact the Institute of Applied Energetics right away. Be a catalyst for changing the way healthcare is done around the world. Visit www.AppliedEnergeticsInstitute.com and start your new career today. Who were the gods of antiquity? They've been described as the forces of nature, levels of consciousness, and aspects of our psyche. Stories that depict their incredible weapons, their flying machines, and their amazing adventures are characterized as being the product of our ancestors' fanciful imaginations. But what if the tales of the gods are true? Did the writers, chroniclers, and scribes of our distant past actually document a realistic view of our origin? My latest book, Man Made, The Chronicles of Our Extraterrestrial Gods, looks at our most ancient legends. Learn of the torrid romances, elaborate plots, violent scandals, and conspiracies that played out in antiquity. Find out the role the gods played in the life and culture we have today. If you want to find out the truth of who we are and where we come from, order your copy of Man Made today. For more information, go to www.manmadethechronicles.com. That's www.manmadethechronicles.com. Move past the crossroads in your life and discover alternative solutions to your deepest concerns at SoHealer.com. So whether it's a physical problem, an emotional issue, a question about work, or troubles in your relationships, naturopath and medical intuitive Dr. Rita Louise can help you bring peace, harmony, and health back into your life. Schedule a session today. Visit SoulHealer.com right away and live the life you've been dreaming of. journey to the dark side of the spirit world and meet the bad kids on the block in Dark Angels, an insider's guide to ghosts, spirits, and attached entities. Who are these bad kids? As a child, you might have met one at night, under your bed, in your closet, or down a dark hallway. Dark Angels is an adult dissertation about ghosts. It's filled with revealing information about how these dark forces can influence our lives. Order your copy of Dark Angels today. Visit www.darkangelsbook.com for more information. And now back to Just Energy Radio with Dr. Rita Louise. Hello and welcome back to Just Energy Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Rita Louise, and thank you all for staying tuned to the second hour of the show. Don't forget, Just Energy Radio is by, brought to you by SoulHealer.com, and you can listen to us live every Thursday evening here on the Inception Radio Network. And so I want to remind you, if you weren't listening to the beginning of the show, that if you are interested in becoming an energy medicine, a certified energy medicine practitioner, a certified intuitive counselor, or a certified medical intuitive, please do go to www.appliedenergeticsinstitute.com and check out the training programs I offer. All of them are on sale for a very limited time till the end of April. And um, it's a great program. Learn from the, the uh, comfort of your own home. Also, check out um, our archives at www.justenergyradio.com or on our YouTube channel, Just Energy Radio. So in this hour, we're going to be talking about In Search of Mr. or Mrs. Wright because we want to find out all about that love thing. And you have to say it that way, the love thing. So to like find, help us find our, our groove again, get a, help us get our mojo back, we're going to be speaking with E. Gray Lormier, 
from the artful science of true love. You know, I love URLs that are all one word and you have to go, yeah, the artful science of true love. But let me tell you a little bit about Ed and get him on the air. Igre Loamir is a former entrepreneur, company founder, and CEO with lifelong passion for people and a wonderful effect that true love has had on him and his and persons in his life. He has a bachelor's degree in liberal arts from Penn State and an MBA with emphasis in marketing and finance. He has received diverse training and numerous certificate certifications in leadership, psychology, public affairs, organizational psychology, management, sales and marketing from various institutions and organizations. So from the artful science of true love, true love dot com, please welcome E. Gray Lormier. Hey, Ed, how's it going? How are you doing, Dr. Rita? It's great to be on your show. I think I'm a little show. tired. <laughs> I bet you are. It's a long day for you, huh? Well, I always have long days, but you can always tell when I'm starting to get tired because my reading goes, I mean, not that it was great before, but... You know, since the last time you've been on, my intros have gotten much better, and I usually don't flub on people's intros too bad. But I, I didn't do very good. I didn't do good for you today, Ed. I guess I'll just have to have you on again so I can, like, show you that I can do it. Anyway. Oh, we, we can do it as many times as you want, Rita. Really. Until you get it right, you know, we'll just keep trying. Until I get it right. Man, I'm going to have to do it, like, every day. Um, <laughs> so what's new in the world of love? I mean, because it's been a while since you've been on, and, you know, social science and our understanding of relationships changes a lot. And I'm wondering in the, if in the last year or so, if there's been any, like, new breakthroughs that um, have come up or that you've discovered. Well, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't think that the, the proposition of love it is is new by any regards. I mean, you know, it's been around since the beginning of time. You know, Homer's Odyssey was about, you know, Odysseus spending 20 years away from his true love, Penelope, and getting back to her. I mean, you write about this kind of stuff uh, in, in the work that you do. So I'm not sure that there's anything new, uh, you know, under the under the umbrella of love. Well, I mean, I in the, you that, know, psychology, you know, area what people have been writing or things that you've been seeing that have ch been changing, even in the how people relate to love or not relate to love, I mean, because that changes all the time. Yeah, you know, I think at a fundamental level, Rita, we're, we're becoming, as a, as a group, um, and not just experts, but, you know, people in general, we're becoming a little smarter about, how connecting really works in a love relationship. And I guess that's more exciting than, than uh, you know, anything. You know, what it really takes to connect. And you know, one of the reasons why I've shifted my focus from, you know, working with couples to working towards singles is because I look at them as a clean slate. So I, it's an opportunity to coach and teach and mentor um, individuals on how to, how to form those bonds of love, and, you know, those connections in, in a better way. It helps, you know, keep the relationship more long term uh, if if we connect the correct way. And what I mean by connect the correct way is if we do that on a physical level, on an emotional level, on an intellectual level. Um, so I think we're getting smarter about that, and I think that's new. And that's certainly something that, that warrants some discussion and, and some airtime. Um, and I think people, you know, are really interested in, in how do I do that the right way especially folks that are single and, and maybe wrestling with mis meeting Miss Wright or, or Mr. Wright, as you, as you put it out there. <laughs> well, you know, we're going we're gonna to be talking about love, and well, I'll share this story real quick. So when I got married, this very good friend of ours, uh, Thomas, who's a minister, but he's, he's a friend of, that I know from doing psychic fairs, and he's this really cool guy. And so he did our wedding, and he did, like, this little, you know, I don't want to say sermon, but he was talking about love. And, um, and so his comment was, you know, when you get married, you want to have love, not love. <laughs> and so what is love? What does healthy love look like or feel like or seem like or... 
You know, how do we well, experience? I, I, think, I think maybe uh, was it Tom that, did the, that delivered the sermon Thomas. <laughs> at the wedding? Mm-hmm. I think maybe yeah. Thomas was alluding to the fact that, you know, there is infatuation and love that revolves around infatuation. And that's kind of a groovy love, as you put it. Um, and that's really, you know, that's really the realm of the physical. I mean, that's exciting our instincts. That's getting us, uh, you know, the good brain chemistry of infatuation flowing between, between a couple you know, you need strong mutual physical attraction to have that take place. I, I think that a, a more deep-seated love, one that combines passion with compassion, um, can evolve if you if you meet that basic tenet. If you have that strong mutual physical attraction to build upon, I think that you can get to the other love that he was talking about, which is, is a combination of, you know, passionate love and compassionate love. And that's where you're not only connected physically, because let's face facts, Rita, when you first get together and you're really grooving on each other, I mean, you just want to touch and be close together all the time. Everybody's been head over heels in a, in a romantic relationship. You know, you can't wedge a, an electron between between a couple that's, that's really infatuated with each other. They can't get close enough to each other. They can't experience each other enough physically. Um, but then, you know, that's really... A, a species level strategy to get us together and propagate the species to make sure that, that we produce we reproduce so in, in essence our instincts really hijack our mind um, the, the longer term love comes when we achieve an emotional balance and uh, we we in she, you know achieve uh, intellectual balance between each other so I think maybe that Thomas at your wedding was talking about, you know, those two things and, and what he was what he was trying for you, what he was trying to to get for you was that, that longer term love that, that kind of lasts a lifetime. If you can connect and, and stay balanced emotionally and intellectually. Well, I I completely agree, but it was pretty funny because we still are running around going Love. I mean, you have to, you know, he said it much better than we did. Love. But, uh, well, what do you think he meant when he said it that way? Well, I think that, you know, he was talking about where the love was just about, you know, the infatuation part and hopping in the sack and, you know, it's love, but not love, you know, not, not the, not the healthy kind, you know, um, more like, well, no, wait a, a minute. Now, now, time out. So let's not, you know that that infatuation phase, that 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 bonding phase, that's very healthy. You know, sex is very healthy. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I agree, but sometimes you know, if the sex goes away, there's nothing else, and that's not the healthy part. Yeah, and and you know, an understanding of why that happens. Um, you know, may be important. You know, what really, it, it's designed, again, to produce a pregnancy. So it really revolves around, you know, menstrual cycle. Um, we stay infatuated, most people stay infatuated between three and, and nine months. And that, you know, is nature providing plenty of time to, to conceive a child. And, again, you know, after that period wanes. And, again, it varies from individual to individual, but usually three to three to nine months. After that wanes, if there is emotional imbalance between the partners, um, that really, really comes out and, and is, is suddenly noticed by at least one of the partners, if not two. Also, if there's intellectual disparity um, and you're not connected intellectually, that also stands out like a sore thumb. You know, the typical result for that is either, you know, a breakup or a couple that stays together but, but harbors ill feelings, you know, over that. So what I like to do, you know, when I coach folks um, and they go through the, the program that I have set up for them, what I like to do for singles is to say, listen, it's very, very important while you're infatuated, while you're in that phase of your love relationship, to also imprint emotionally. You know, it's very important to, to gain an understanding of your of your partner emotionally and be able to learn how to deal with emotions, you know, which are experiences, to be able to deal with them in the now to, to not keep them, but to share them with your partner in a meaningful way. I don't care if they're good emotions or bad emotions. Being able to share them and deal with them um, and talk about them 
is, is very critical to establishing that long-term, lifetime, true love relationship. But what if you meet somebody and the sex is hot? You know what I mean? I mean, it's smoking. And then you realize after that nine months, you know, that they're stupid. And as Ron White says, you know, you can't (laughs) fix stupid. So then what do you do? I mean, do you still continue with the relationship and try to find some deeper aspect of them or give them a good book to read? Or, I mean, what do you do? I mean, you've just invested nine months. Well, I think a lot of people do all those things. Uh, you know, a lot of it revolves around whether or not there's a child conceived. I mean, if you take that relationship to that point, you know, maybe you get married, maybe you don't, but there is a child that's now conceived during that time, a whole new host of, of brain chemistry is produced for both the man and the woman in, in both brains. That chemistry is designed very naturally and has evolved to keep us together for an additional seven years. And, you know, and I always like to allude to it. I always like to say, oh, people go to sleep for seven years, you know, when, when they have a baby together. And, and that chemistry, again, can hijack our, our brains so that the emotional imbalance and the intellectual disparity doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. Where couples do have trouble and where they, where they wrestle is when there is an, a, a pregnancy. Um, because there is, that brain chemistry is not released. Then, yeah, emotional imbalance does stand out, or like you said, you know, um, disparity intellectually, where, oh, my God, this guy is a real dummy. What do I do now? Um, and, again, I think the typical result is, a, is a, either a breakup or, you know, people will sometimes stay in an adequate, even harmful relationship for a very long time. You know, I mean, you know this. This is very commonplace. And see, that's the part I don't get. I mean, not that I haven't done that myself to a certain extent, but to me, there there's just this point that you get to, and it's like where you have to just say to yourself, you know what, this really isn't working to, for me, and I have to make the choice of, of what can I do to take care of myself, and what do I need to do to honor myself. And and that usually means bye bye. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it does when you get to that point. And you know, people are extremely tolerant in love relationships. And the reason for that, and the reason that people will stay together way too long, is is called the uh, evolutionary exclusion response. We don't. We're, we're wired naturally at an instinctual level. To not be alone, it's a very fearful experience for us. So the fear of of leaving a group, even a group of two, especially when you, you've been, uh, you know, pair bonded, it is very difficult for people to do. Um, but it's definitely the right answer, you know, sooner than later, because really you're prolonging the inevitable for most people. And I think statistics prove this, prove this out. You know, I mean, you got. You know, 53 million single women in the United States, 50 million single men. Um, You have 18 million, you know, women living alone, almost as many men. To me, Rita, this is a a pandemic, and it's going unaddressed. It should be the forefront of of what we think about. When you talk about the, the, the financial ramifications, you know, the social ramifications and the personal ramifications of couple splitting up because they don't know how to how to imprint. They don't know how to grow together during that infatuation phase. It's dramatic and, and the impact is immeasurable. I don't I don't think anybody can really measure it. But it seems like or one of the things that I have learned is that you know you have to make an emotional investment into the relationship. Um, like there is this book and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was the name, cellmate or soulmate. And one of the things she talks about is that the relationship is like a bank account, you know, and you have to, like, put money into the bank account in order to be able to get something back. But what was really interesting for me was that the relationship didn't mean the family, you know, so it didn't mean, you know, myself and my significant other and the kids or the house or whatever was, you know, us in the big sense of the word, it was just the other person. And I think a lot of people lose sight of 
there's an investment that needs to be made directly, you know, between the partners. And that's a different investment than the family and the house and keeping things going day to day. And I could see where a lot of marriages would fall apart if, you know, if as, as the mom figure, I'm the one, you know, making the dinners and making the lunches and taking the kids to school and doing all of these family things. It's like I've just invested all of this time and energy into the family, but it's not investing any into the relationship where the husband can get bored or whatever, or vice versa. You know, they're doing their job thing where the other person can get bored or feel insecure because they're not getting their needs met. Well, one of the things, one of the, the coaching points that I like to stress, and, and this is for just about any issue that uh, single men and women may be wrestling with, but one of, the, one of the coaching points that I really love to hit on because it's so important um, is to deal with emotion in the now. Don't repress it, number one. And number two, I think that it's really, really critical that couples, when they first get together, they agree that they are going to keep themselves at the center of the bullseye of the dartboard. And everything else is going to become peripheral to that union between them. In other words, kids, you know, might be the next circle in the dartboard. Careers might be the next circle in the dartboard. You know, other family might be the next circle in the dartboard. But I think the key point is, is that, that they keep each other at the very center and the focal point of the rest of their life is that union between them. And when they get into emotional balance, it's really easy to do. And they end up raising healthy kids that get to see what a love relationship is really all about. Even amidst all the craziness of life in our modern culture, if they're able to keep that, that, that focal point, the relationship, um, it, it just works like ringing a bell. Well, one of the things that I see working with my clients, because, you know, I have to tell you from a psychic's point of view, the number, you know, if this was family feud and they wanted the top five reasons people come for a reading, the number one reason <laughs> is about relationships you know, with like 75%, you know, and then the next one down the list would be like work, money, you know, and then after that, it's kind of a hodgepodge of everything else. But that's the number one reason people want, I mean, to have a reading done is to find out about their, you know, their true love, their maybe true love, is he cheating on me? I mean, it, you know, all kinds of things. But one of the things that I get a lot are, I mean, most of my clients are women, especially when it comes to relationship stuff. You know, they, they want to find their true love. But when I look at their energy, I mean, because I do believe to a certain extent that the law of attraction, or at least principles based on the law of attraction, are critical to create the perfect relationship. And when I look at their space as to what they want, you know, and, and the kind of person they're trying to attract to themselves... You know, the number one thing I get is breathing. You know, so they don't even care. They're, they have no idea of really what they want. And, you know, I'll take them through these exercises of getting clarity about what they want and how they want to feel in their relationship space. You know, I move them out of breathing. <laughs> like alive would be good. Ambulatory would be good. Uh Ooh, we can only go up from there. <laughs> right. Well, if a, if a man doesn't meet up to your standards, lower them. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> well, he was. I said that. I had a, a client who was a friend, and we were going through this exercise, and I said, well, what if they were like this? And it's like, she goes, well, I don't know. I go, but they were breathing. <laughs> She's like, well, yeah, I guess. It's like, okay, I think you got my point. But <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a, a, a real general lack of understanding. Um I don't necessarily buy into the the hype out there right now, especially from the dating sites that that uh, talk about compatibility being so important on so many levels. I think you know one site has like twenty nine levels dimensions. They call them twenty nine dimensions of love. I can't I can't keep you know four dimensions 
in in focus, you know, space and time. Uh, I, I, I lose, I lose that. <laughs> so you start talking about 29. Why well, you lost me a long time ago? I I don't really subscribe to that, Rita. I, I don't. I I subscribe to the fact that when you first meet, you have a real opportunity to grow to equilibrium in terms of of uh, emotion and in terms of intellect. You have a, a real opportunity to to explore each other's interests um, intellectually, to explore each other's opinions intellectually, and to find a point of equilibrium. It's not necessarily 50% on some, on some connecting lines. It might be, you know, 75% Rita, you know, 25% her husband. But I do think that the critical point here to make is that I don't think people need to have a lot of preconceived notions when they first get together. Man, that's about instincts. That's about being attracted, you know. Um, you, you find balance through growth, not compromise. What if, really. But what if the person just has these, you know, I don't want to say character flaws because it's just who they are that, um, you know, or who we are or whatever that make them, that just make you crazy. Here, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a true life example. My okay. ex-husband. All right. And I'm not going to say I'm like the biggest neat freak, but, you know, I don't really like a dirty house. But, you know, if your shoes get left on the floor, they get left on the floor. It, it, you know, the world's not coming to an end. However, this man, he would make something. I, I called it the touch and drop mentality. If he touched it, he dropped it wherever he was. And so if he made like Hot Pockets, he liked Hot Pockets, the cardboard box was on one counter. The cellophane was on the counter next to the microwave, and then the little sleeve that it came in was on the counter next to the dishes. And and then he would just leave them all there. And I mean, he would maybe put his dish in the sink. And then after, you'd have to go around and pick up all of his crap. Well, you know, that's okay for a while. But, <laughs> you know, no amount of talking and negotiating really fixed anything. And so I yeah, think I that yeah, finding yeah, people that at least have a base equality with you can make your life so much easier and not build up so much resentment in the long run. Well, I, I got to, first of all, I got to ask you, is this really about shoes and about dishes? Cause I don't think it is. It was I, just I mean, what you're things. really talking about here is you getting as mad as a hornet at him for doing those things over and over again. Right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So what I like to coach to is to deal with that emotion each and every time. Listen, honey, you're making me as mad. you're making me crazy over here. I'm really mad because of your behavior. This behavior, this very specific behavior is making me feel really mad. Now, if he doesn't respond to you, Rita, by saying, I don't want to make you mad, I, that, that's the last thing in the world I want to do is make you mad, I'm definitely willing to change this, this behavior. I, I'm willing to try to change this behavior because I don't want you to be mad. I want you to be happy. I love you. If he's, ha if he's okay with you being mad every day, every single day, you're probably not a good fit. But it's not about the dishes and it's not about the shoes. It's about your emotion and not being able to deal with it in a satisfactory manner in the moment. See? Thus, X. <laughs> <laughs> it just took a while. Well, you know, because <laughs> I think a lot of people, you meet somebody, and on the surface, things seem okay, and then as you get to know them, their guard comes down. I mean, all right, people that know me realize, I mean, that what you see is what you get. You know, who I am 10 minutes ago is pretty much who I am now. And whether I'm in a formal location, you know, I might not curse or anything. And I might, you know, use better grammar, maybe, um, and not put my feet up. Um, but what you get is what you get. But there are a lot of people that when they get in a new relationship and they're in that infatuation period, that, you know, like you don't want to fart in front of the other person. You know, you don't want to do those things. And so now, you know, you you created this relationship, this bond. And then, you know, the you start coming out, you know, 
out from underneath the your sides and the seams start <laughs> splitting and your true self starts popping out and it might be too late. Yeah, yeah the Frankenstein monster all of a sudden <laughs> appears, right? But it could happen well, on both leg, both legs. Somebody just put that break. It's like, no, not break a leg. But it could happen on both sides where both people are not really honest with each other. Yeah, okay. and, and I think the tendency um, from, a, from a counseling standpoint, from a couple's counseling standpoint, is to promote compromise. Oh, you know, you've got to change your behaviors. You know, you, you've, got to, you've got to do things differently in order to make this relationship work. And, and I'm not a big believer in, in, in compromise. I'm really not. I'm a believer in dealing with the emotionality of the situation in the now and getting it out of the way. You know, this, this little nuance of you is driving me absolutely crazy. Um, and that's how, you, that's how you promote growth. And sometimes it's not always negative. It's not always, you know, oh, you're doing this and it's making me mad or you're doing this and it's making me feel bad. Sometimes it's good things. You know, wow, I really, I really love that. When, when we do that together, I really love that. Well, let's get some more of that, you know, and let's get some less of the other. But the important thing here is that you, you are in balance and you achieve balance through growth. Once a couple, what I find working with couples who are true love couples, Rita, is once they achieve balance, it's hard for them to get out of balance. All right, I need to stop you there for one second. You said... So when I work with true love couples, so is there a difference between true love couples and other couples? Oh my God, yeah. Oh well, what, maybe that maybe that's why I'm kind of not feeling like I'm hitting right here. Explain that. Explain that to to the listeners. Well, I, I, I'd be happy to. Um, the difference between the two is that with a true love couple, a couple that is really connected and bonded on each active level of mind, you know, instinctually or physically, perceptually or emotionally, and intellectually, when they've really bonded, when they come out of balance, it stands out like a sore thumb. And they don't care about the what's and the why's. They never ask the question why. Why are you doing that? Why do you always do that? Why do you never do this? They don't have that conversation. They race to get back into balance. What they do is they, they deal with the feelings of each other. And, and the reason they race to get back into balance is not for their partner. They do it because they're in pain when they're out of balance. The problem with a lot of couples is they never get into balance in the first place. When infatuation wanes, um, the, the emotional imbalance comes out, the intellectual disparity comes out, and they don't know how to deal with it at that point. And that's why, again, I love to, to work with singles because we can take care of that before it ever manifests. So how common is it to meet somebody that can be your true love couple person versus just somebody that's breathing that you happen to marry? <laughs> I'm back to the breathers, the mouth breathers. But Rita, I think it's very common. Again, I think the, the, the problem is not growing. I, I was uh, doing a seminar uh, a couple of years ago, and I was really wrestling with the concept between what's the difference between growth and compromise. And I was really wrestling with this. And I was in a coffee shop that I often go to, and there was a young kid there. He was a senior in high school, and his name was Matt. And he looked at me, and he kind of knew me and recognized me from being a customer. And he said, "What's bothering you?" Yeah, you know, basically, I'm upbeat, but this, this, I just had this 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 look of confusion and fear on my face because I really wanted to drive home this point in the seminar. And I said, ah, I'm just wrestling with, with an esoteric concept, the difference between growth and compromise. He said, oh, that's easy. This, this is an 18-year-old kid in high school. I said, ah, that's easy. He goes, when we compromise, we solve a problem today. He said, when we grow, we solve a problem forever. Hey, that's pretty good. Where did he hear it? <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm sure he's gonna, he's probably a five minute cap at now at that Lehigh University or something. So, um, and that that really is the difference, you know. Well, but I think a lot of people um, don't get to that point. I think a lot of people, you know, stay hook up with someone and end up staying in the relationship, even though. 
inside they know they shouldn't be there, but to make the choice to not go. And this is before they get married. You know, kind of how you were talking sure. about they're afraid to be alone, and so they just figure, well, they can they can uh, compromise themselves, you know, not compromise the relationship or make the relationship cope or grow or change that they can just, you know, accept it and compromise to, well, this will be okay and I'll just deal with it and get married and hope it's happily ever after. Yeah, and, and you know what, Rita, we a lot of people really do need to be coached in this area because I, I don't think – our educational institutions really prepare us for exactly what you just said. Um, so coaching singles to do it the right way up front, to look for those traps, because what you're describing is a convenience trap. I'm going to stay here because it's convenient. It's very painful to go out and be alone again. When you're coached as a single individual before you enter the love relationship, you know how to look out for those things, and you know, again, how to deal with them in the now. So they don't become a big a big deal later on. They never get a chance, but they never have an opportunity to manifest. That's what success is really all about when it comes to, to pair bonding in a, in a true love relationship. So my recommendation to folks is to actually go out and, and get some coaching. If they're confused about this or if they've been in many relationships with, with bad results, and let's say facts, most relationships end with negative results. They don't end with positive results. Um, you know, it's to, to, get some, to get some help. Rita, I, I think even bad coaching is better than no coaching. <laughs> um, okay, so you were saying that there are all these people that are single. But in today's day and age, it seems like other than meeting somebody at work um, or meeting somebody in church, but, you know, if you don't go to church, like if you listen to this show, you probably don't go to church all that much. Um where where do you meet these people? Oh, I I think the I think the spark of physical attraction can happen anywhere. You know, Rita, you walk down the street in a busy city, and whether you're aware of it or not, your subconscious is making yes no decisions on every single man you pass. And this is nothing about your marriage. I know you're very happily married and incredibly in love with the guy you're married and, to. And in case <laughs> any of my husband's friends are listening, you heard that correctly. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. We'll give, you, we'll give that, that sanctity of marriage a little plug there. Um, but the reality is, as you walk down the street, you're making yes, no decisions constantly. Um, the, 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 the problem is, is when we don't know how to act on them the right way, we don't know what to look for. It's difficult to act on them. Fear of rejection enters the equation. If we could remove the fear of rejection for single people, they would know what to look for and pretty much be able to tell if somebody was single, available, and, and open, and interested. And, you know, we would be able to, to, to meet um, and, and act upon that physical attraction much more readily. Okay, but... I mean, I'm a woman. If I met some guy at the supermarket, you know, they're always saying, oh, you can meet guys at the supermarket. And yeah, some guy walked up and gave right? me his phone number. You know how far that would go? The next dial, if that, and I would throw it away. I would never act on I would never give somebody my phone number. I mean, it took a long time for me to actually give a stranger my business card, you know, that it wasn't a business-to-business -business contact, you know, just to – you know, at a restaurant or whatever. Oh, yeah, here's my card. Because I'm like, oh, they might call me up. <laughs> yeah. And I think a know, lot of people not... are afraid to do that, to just, you know, they might be like a, a homicidal maniac or something. It could happen. Well, I, I, I think fear is the result of, of misguided approaches. I'm talking about a situation with two single people that are open to meeting they're communicating on an emotional level. The woman has clearly invited an approach. I'm very interested and I'm very available. And she has communicated that to the man. And I'm saying, the how man, do you even get to that point? How do you even well, get to the point that there's conversation and dialogue? I mean, because that's like, that's like relationship 202. I'm talking about how do you get your foot in the door? How do you open the door in today's day and age, 
It just, you know, when you're 20, you go to bars, you have friends that are, you know, you're out partying, you're going to a lot of concerts, you know, it, it's just a very different scene. And so I guess I'm talking my, you know, 35 and older group, you know, on behalf of the 35 and over group that might be listening, which is probably more the demographics. Well, there, there's a new thing. There's a new push right now that I, I love. Um, meetups, are you familiar with these? It's a, it's a new phenomenon. It's, it's actually on the web is, is where you join the groups. And, and they're, they're built around um, interests, you know, like it might be hiking or, or it could be dancing or it could be any of this stuff. But it's for single people where they can go in a, in a social environment, you know, creating that, that 21-year-old pub environment once again. Um, but there's an activity that, that people mutually enjoy. So there's some common ground there. And you can actually go and physically see the people. You can you can hear them. You can you hear the tonality in their voice. You can you can smell them <laughs> if you want. You can pick up those pheromones. You can tell if it's a good genetic fit and if there's good physical attraction there. It kind of takes away some of the pressure of what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, if there's some some kind of creepy guy walking around a supermarket hitting on all the girls, you're probably not going to want to give that guy a date. But if availability, openness, and fun has been communicated and a message on a subconscious level has come over here because I'm attracted to you, both these people are single and the guy's getting the message and reciprocating by saying, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of attracted to you too. He, he gets involved into a saunter and goes over and approaches and says, you know, how about a cup of coffee? There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so I'm going there, Ed. I'm diving in feet first right now. So what about Internet dating? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're probably going to have a difference of opinion in this area only because I know uh, I know something about you when it comes to Internet dating. But let's do it. You know, I, I think that anything that helps single people meet is good. I think if, if your comfort zone is Internet dating, that's fine. I do take some exceptions to it. Um, I, I truly do. And I guess what I should and do is ask you, be... you know, what do you like about it, Rita? Well, I mean, tell me why, your why exceptions you first. Of it? Tell me your exceptions first. Well, I think number one is it does not engage in sexual intelligence. It doesn't give you a chance to really know who you're about to go out on a date with. You, you have very limited information. Let's face facts. I mean, you, you go on the Internet... What's the first sorting process you use? Uh, well, you're, it depends on what place I'm at. Um, you're single. Anyway, you're looking to meet. You're looking ahead. to meet a great guy. What's the first sorting thing you do when you go on an internet site? The first well, I mean, you, you, you picture, start right? messaging different people, or they message you, or whatever. Well, I mean, you look at the picture, right? Let's be, let's be honest. Okay, you all right. Look you at look the at the picture. picture. <laughs> Am I right? You know, okay, discounted, discounted, discounted. What if the guy took a bad picture? What if he's a great guy and a perfect match for you? What if he's emotionally mature and intellectually engaged? But well, you know, that's picture. usually never the case. You know, when I, all right, I like Internet dating. I'll just put it out there. Hey, everybody, here's my dirt. I mean, I like Internet dating, and I recommend it to a lot of people, especially women, because it's safe. You know, you can engage with multiple people, get to know them via chat, become friends with them to a certain extent, and then make the decision if you want to go out with them, you know, which makes it a much less risky task. Plus, there's a lot of people to choose from. But I have to tell you, on this one dating site that I was on before I met my husband, or there was this guy who was hitting on every single woman and he had this picture of, like, a college football player. And it was his picture, except it was, like, 30 years old. And uh, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I feel deceived, so you just need to not talk to me. Um, you know, but you don't like it. But I have to tell you, Ed, it's like I met my husband on a dating site. My brother met his wife on a dating site. My sister met her husband on a dating site. Um, I have multiple friends that have met people on dating sites. And what's interesting is that we all have met other people on the same dating website. Okay, Cupid or Cupid.com. I think they changed their name. Cupid.com. So I'm putting it out there. Cupid.com. 
Um, <laughs> which is really weird because it's like, oh, my, my, my son met his girlfriend on Cupid.com. He was like, yeah, you know, I met her on Cupid.com. It's like, hey, that's where I met Wayne. So, Well, I, but, I do think that, that safety, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. I think there are definite benefits that go even beyond safety. You know, from a woman's perspective, I think it's also convenience. I mean, it, it truly is convenience if you're busy. I think it levels the playing field for a lot of people. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think you, in your case, I really think you got lucky. You know, I've talked to many people that have had horror, horrific experiences on dating sites. It's horrible. But, see, I'm really picky. And I didn't even go on a date with any of the guys until I already had talked to him for almost three months. Yeah, I mean, if you if you have the time <laughs> to, do, to do that, then, you know, but I might. Well, my you know, it depends on yeah. are you in a rush to just meet somebody and so you'll just go on a date with anybody? Or are you going to sit there and to me, to me, the dating sites give you a chance to create a friendship. You know, and so you talk to them, you chat back and forth with them, you goof around with them, so you kind of get to know their personality. And so if they're a jerk, then why would you want to go on a date with them? I don't understand when people will go and it's like, I mean, I've heard stories of women going on and they'll send a guy an email and they'll email back and forth two or three times and be like, well, let's go on a date. Well, to me, that's, you know, a disaster waiting to happen. That's that's right up there with breathing. Rita, again, I mean, I, I think you're lucky. I'm I'm happy for you. I really I'm proud of you for for taking a. But I know a, like eight people, eight, and, and and maximizing your opportunity. Um, my point with internet dating is that what I find what I find the, the main difficulty with internet dating, you can do all those things you just said, and get so much more information in person than you can from the web. You can't you cannot engage your instincts. You cannot really get a gauge of the physical attraction until you meet. I mean, you guys didn't have a have an online wedding ceremony. I mean obviously you've met your husband at some point, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I mean you're gonna meet anyway. My point is is that in the physical you can get all that information. You can tell whether or not this is a great guy and a guy that you want to go on a date with. Through conversation, face to face. Not only that, but you're actually getting to see the real person. You know, you're you're getting to to touch them and smell them, and you know, allow a lot of other communication to take place on an emotional and instinctual level that you really don't get from. Oh, the and land. and I agree with you. I mean, I agree with you on that level, and I'm just talking about breaking the ice and creating a venue to break that ice versus. Well, some guy gave me his phone number in the supermarket, you know, or I mean, I only have one friend in all of my girlfriends. I only have one friend that she got a guy's number at a sting concert. They were in the row behind us and she ended up calling him up and they went out and they got married. I mean, they're divorced now, but she's the only friend that I have that had actually met somebody and went on a date with somebody because they gave her is their phone number. One. <laughs> so I don't mean to like knock it, but I don't, I just don't see it happening. I don't see pe- women. All right. I'm speaking from a woman's place. I don't feel like women are comfortable with, Hey baby, here's my phone number. You know, why don't you call me? <laughs> well, again, I think that there are, that there are physical real world, um, activities that take away some of that pressure. And I know a ton of people who have met through those types of activities and, and have entered into a, a, a fine love relationship and ended up getting married. Okay, so what I, kind of activities? Putting, I'm not saying don't internet date. No, if, if we're just comfortable with discussing. It and, and, it's, and it works for you, go for it. I mean, I'm, I'm all about people getting together in the right way um, as singles so that they give their love relationship a chance beyond the infatuation phase. Um. So you know, really, at the end of the day, I, I don't. I, my 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 gripe with the internet is, is that it just doesn't engage enough of 
the intelligence that's required to make a good decision as to whether or not you know you're a good fit. It doesn't provide you with that opportunity. You still got to meet in person. You still got to know if you like the way the guy can make a shoe smell before you're willing to enter into a love relationship with him anyway. So, you know, that that's kind of my take on it, Rita. Okay. I mean, I, I don't disagree. You know, I mean, you eventually have to meet the person or else <laughs> that would be kind of interesting. Well, I mean, I guess some people don't meet and they just get married anyway. But... Have you ever done counseling with someone who has come out of a community that their cultural inheritance is from uh, arranged marriages? I know that's kind of a Uh, weird question, but I'm just curious. Oh, yes, I have, and it's so difficult. Um, I I can I can talk about a, a specific friend of mine who is a medical doctor, a, a, actually a, a heart doctor, a cardiologist, and he will give every single intellectual argument in the world about why arranged marriages are better, you know, how, why the divorce rate is lower and how it makes all the sense in the world, and it, these are these are intelligent, well thought out arguments, and I just laugh and I say, well, yeah, but you're missing out. On, on the emotional and instinctual connection that has been arranged for you up front. That's not what a love relationship is really about, and it's not the foundation of what a love relationship is built on. I, that my argument back to him is you're describing a business relationship, not a love relationship. Well, what's really interesting is that many times those individuals, um, they they don't, understand what dating is they don't understand the energy and so you know we've been talking about dating and how it's instinctual but i don't know i think there's a certain amount of it that's learned because those individuals they couldn't get their energy you know if i say chakras and stuff i mean they couldn't open their second chakra up to save the world and they're like well you know i'd like to meet somebody it's like breathing was doing better (laughs) than <laughs> than some of those people because they they got no mojo. I mean, no yeah. offense if you're from one of those yep. cultures. It's just true, though. Well, you know, you're you're, you're hitting the nail on the head with that. Um, they really do need to learn how how to um, be able to communicate on an emotional level in many ways. Um, and you know, the emotional intelligence is nothing new. I think I think Dan uh, Coleman publishes book emotional intelligence but in the late 80s and, and it's taken off there's 100 books out there that, that delve into emotional intelligence and still people wrestle with this all the time Rita um, you know I find a lot of women that I do counseling with and coaching with really communicate the wrong subconscious messages and they miss opportunities with great guys because of it well, like what kind of messages well I, I think you know it's it's easy to get caught in, in what I like to term haunting of a past relationship by way of, for instance. I mean, there, there's, other, there's other causality that makes them communicate negativity and, and, uh, and you know, mistrust um, through their facial expressions, through their body language, through their, through their uh, you know, gestures, et cetera. And guys pick up on that, especially guys that have a lot of dating choices, great guys, guys that are mature emotionally and ready to connect and looking for a partner. Um, they pick up on that. And so they pass right by those women and move on to a, a candidate that they feel is more uh, acceptable. And the, the, the problem that I find, especially with women, and men do this too, um, I find that they, they're not even where they're doing it. And, and here's what can happen, Rita. You know, you came out of a relationship and it was bad. The end was bad. Now you see a guy that you're physically attracted to. Well, some of the, some of that attraction you experienced with the last guy you were with. But that trigger takes you to the memory of the end of the relationship, and you don't even realize what happens to your face. You don't even realize what happens to your body language, how it closes in, how your, how your facial expressions become negative because you're taken back to the end of that last relationship. Um, and what I try to do with coaching, um, and you can, you, you can get to my coaching through the website, The Artful Science of True Love, 
what I try to do is take that away um, and, and to, to revert, uh, especially women, but even men, back into their natural love state. And it's very powerful stuff. And once you do that, man, they attract great guys like Moss to the planet. So what is the natural state of love? What natural love state? Well, can you think back to when you were, you know, 11 years old and there was a boy chasing you around a merry-go-round? Yeah, but usually they wanted to kick my butt because I probably punched them or something. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know what? You guys were flirting whether you know it or not. And your faces lit up. And you're so accepting, and you're so available, and you're just so curious, and all that comes across. And it comes across on an emotional level, not not an intellectual level. You don't have to sit down and have a conversation. You know, go over in the swing and say, hey, okay, let's talk about it. It's really strictly emotional communication. When we become adults, we become jaded and forget how to do that. And I'm telling you, but, you know, most women in particular – Go back to the negativity of a past relationship. These relationships didn't end well. Um, if, if they if they were still going on all cylinders, they'd still be together. So we don't want that communication, especially when you're meeting or going on a first date after you've done all the Internet stuff and you're ready to go on a date. We don't want that. We want the available. We want the good. We want the fun you to come across. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that works both ways. You know, that women can tell the same thing. You know, he's still hung up on his ex-wife or ex-girlfriend or, you know, is not really willing to engage in the game. I mean, I had one client who dated this guy, I don't know, for like two or three, a, a long time, in my opinion, way too long. And she goes, so what's going on? I'm like, nothing. She's like, well, has he moved forward? No. I mean, nothing really changed, and so finally, well, I guess he stopped calling her, and she didn't seem at all upset about that whole thing. And it's like, you know, but she wasted three years with this guy for nothing when she could have been pursuing a different relationship with somebody else. And I'm looking at the clock, and we need to we need to wrap. This hour went way too fast, Ed. Holy cow! Are you serious? I, I yeah, we clock. got like one wow. minute. Wow. You know, we always do this to each other. We always say that it goes too fast. So maybe we should Well, that's because we, we got that, again. like, online. We got an online love relationship, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> we used to tell us a lot. Hey, maybe we, should, uh, maybe we should do this again sometime. What do you think? Well, I'm thinking maybe Valentine's Day. That'd be we great. Can, yeah. Anyway, uh, website, if there's any books or anything you want to mention real quick. So get me scheduled early. Yeah, you just have to remind me, but website, any books you want to mention, because the music is going to be coming up here in a second. Yeah, I'm working on a book right now that's coming out this year called Where Are the Great Guys Hiding? And and this is geared towards single women who are, who are wrestling with some dating issues. Um, so I would really recommend to any females, any women that are wrestling with dating right now, they can go to the artfulscienceoftruelove.com, and there's a, there's a section on there for coaching and counseling, and you know, I do have some openings on my book, and and I'd love to I'd love to help them get get on track and help them meet the guy of their dreams, man. That's what it's really all about, really. Sounds perfect. Okay, so thanks for coming on, Ed. Oh, there it is. I knew it was going to be coming up here in a second. Thanks for coming on, Ed, and sharing your love wisdom with the listeners. <laughs> Oh, you are so welcome. Now we will talk to you later. Well, next week we're taking yet another big turn. We're in the first hour. We're going to be speaking with Michael Cremo about the science and religion. When science and religions are compared, that should be interesting. And in the second hour, we're going to have Len Caston talking about the U.S. UFO conspiracy. And so until next week, I'm Dr. Reed Louise. Do check out the Applied Energetics training program at www.appliedenergeticsinstitute.com. Until next week, be blessed. Join host Dr. Rita Louise each week at this time for Just Energy.